This is Otterson Mill in Devon, and in here is one of the earliest industrial processes. This water turns this wheel, which turns this thing here, which turns a big millstone in there, to turn this into one of these. Everybody needed bread, so there used to be thousands of mills all over the country. This is Dotton. It's a couple of miles from Otterton. There used to be a mill here, but it was knocked down in the 1960s. The first record of a mill on this site, though, is in Doomsday in 1086. We've never dug a mill before, so this site gives us a unique opportunity to look into part of what would have been everyday life for tens of thousands of people. We've got 900 years of history and just three days to untangle it. What is it that you find so exciting about mills? I think they're really interesting structures and we don't know much about them. After all, there must have been many thousands of them in medieval England. and uh, Almost every community would have had one because it made grinding the corn, preparing the bread and everything that much easier. And yet we, we've done very, very little work on them. Why not if they're that exciting? I think it's because of the way archaeologists work. You know, they're either working with sites that are going to be redeveloped and they don't often seem to involve mills. Or they're too small, really, to be part of big research projects that might get the money which archaeologists then spend three or four years digging. So they fall between all those stools. And that's why this is so important. It's not very often you can be fairly confident you've got a site and you've got the chance to actually do anything with it. I mean, I think the way to think of it is you, you are grinding corn by hand with stones. This is pretty well the first process where you harness a different sort of energy, i.e. water power, to, to alleviate all that work. So it's an industrial revolution in, 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 in one sense. This was the last mill building in Dotton. It was knocked down in the 1960s. We're looking for a date for when this building was put up and any sign of anything that may have come before it. There was a mill listed as being in Dotton in Doomsday in 1086. But the big question is, has the mill always been in the same place? There are three main areas that hopefully will provide some answers in the form of dates. The water wheel would have sat in a deep pit. We'll look at how that was built. Inside was a gear pit to hold the gearing. We'll also try to find that and there would have been a domestic area, the part the miller would have lived in. Hopefully we'll come across bits of pottery and household stuff that'll also help us with the dating. The mill sits here, on a road crossing the River Otter in South Devon. Right, photo... <laughs> Bank. Bank's over there, Bank's there. But first, Phil has got to work out where to dig. Shall we help you a bit? No, well, no, no. <laughs> Look, presumably we're on a wheel pit, don't we? Uh, yeah, wheel pit there. But this this photograph was taken from that field over there, looking looking this that way. way. Yeah. Ah, that, you got it. So this building has actually been mapped for hundred and odd years. Its physical presence is, is is well documented. And where we're standing at the moment is just here. This is the mill. The mill was in this area here, coming down here, and at the bottom of it is the wheel somewhere in this position at the end of this leap that I comes mean, down that's, here. That's what we want, isn't it, Martin? Yeah, the wheel pit. I, th I think the wheel pit would be the, the best feature to go for straight away because it'll be a big feature under the ground and will delineate the, the sort of at the end of the building. Well, I mean, it's not that's why we should start doing the radar. Start the then. radar here. Oh, yeah, no, we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't need it. No, we, you do. <laughs> we you don't. May, you may have good map evidence. We all know what Stuart's maps are like. <laughs> <laughs> but no, more importantly, Phil, 
It's the first time we've done a mill. We've not done geophysics or radar over a mill. It's important that we collect that data as a future reference. John, we're not here for your groundbreaking <laughs> geophysics. We're here to do a site. It's the it? way it should be done professionally. Look, we know where it is. It will take us five minutes to oh, do it. I've heard that before. <laughs> ah, over here, Stuart. <laughs> yeah, start, start here, Jimmy. True to his word, within minutes, John's got something for Phil to look at. That's where we reckon the wheel pit is. Then you see all these reflections going down. Those are actually within the mill building. And this is still inside the building, but suggesting we've got internal divisions. So you can start. I mean, that's, that's been worth doing it. Uh, yeah, well, that's it. And, and it didn't take any more than five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Happy now, Phil makes a start. One more scrape and you think you might see a wall. Yeah. And nothing happens. Yeah, and think, oh, well, going. one more scrape and there it might be a wall. Dirty, it though, it is getting dirtier, though. It is getting dirtier. Well, one more scrape later. Ah, no, what's that? That's a brick. That's in situ, isn't it, Phil? That is in situ. That's in situ. Oh, that's good. Look that's, at that. Yeah. Nice load of bricks, yeah. Going straight down there, look. Right. So that's one side there. This is Dotton. Here's the River Otter. This is the road that crosses the river. And the mill where Phil is, is here. Just here, water's diverted from the river to the mill along a channel called a leet. The leet enabled the miller to control the flow of water to the mill. In the field across the road from the mill site, we can see remnants of where the leet might be along the base of the slope. How big was it? How powerful? And can we find a date for when it was dug? Helen opens a trench across it. The mill building is really two buildings in one. There's the industrial part of it, where the machinery would have been, and then there's the domestic side, where the miller lived. Using radar, John and his team have been trying to locate that end of the building. They think they've found it. So we open a trench just across here. Naomi's hoping to find more personal stuff here. Pottery and domestic material, which will give us some dates. All morning, we've been busy looking for the wheel pit. But what might it have looked like? What a cracking little graphic. I mean, presumably, this is actually telling me how my water wheel works. It is, Phil. There's four different types. I mean, how do they, they differ in terms of design and efficiency? Well, it's all about where the water's hitting the paddles. So uh, with, with the overshot and, and, and the breast shot, the water's hitting the paddles high up the wheel. With the undershot and the low breast shot, it's lower down. The one we've got is an undershot wheel. How does that work in terms of efficiency? It's, it's the least efficient of the wheels we've got here. Typical. I Sorry, get a, I get a duff mill, don't I? Yes. Well, <laughs> not, not really. This, this is an older type of technology for a water wheel. I noticed that here you've got this sort of little mini weir effect right underneath the wheel. Yeah, it's actually in the wheel pit itself. And what that is doing is it's creating a little dam of water which gives you an added uh, power to the water wheel. So as the water's coming down the leak, it just gets to that edge and it tips over yeah. and it spins up the wheel. So although it's inefficient, it's not as inefficient as it might be. What are you doing? Just letting... What I'm doing is cutting the grass. <laughs> to be plainly obvious. He's stalled. <laughs> He's I didn't stalled. switch it up. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, what we've got here, Tony, you see on this slope down here? Yeah. There are what are called parch marks. You can see these light-coloured lines on the slope. Yeah. Well, these parch marks are where there might be buried walls under the ground. It's slightly dry across this stone, so they, they start to stand out. But this area's got longer grass in it, so I'm just simply cutting it so we can see it better. And the idea is that Henry is going to map this out with his pole, and we might, might have a footprint of some buildings here. So this is going to be useful? Oh, it is going to be. It's good fun as well. I'm going to go off <laughs> elsewhere, see how long it takes before it can get that engine started again. Ye of little faith. This is where Stuart's cutting the grass, just off to one side of the mill site. 
The leet is here. The parch marks seem to be across all of this area. We leave him to it. Mills were really a very early device for saving labour. Harnessing water power was a huge step forward, as I was to discover. Prior to the water wheel, this is how grinding corn was done. By hand. Some weight to move about, isn't it? It's fairly hard work, and to think uh, from the records that we have, most of the time it was done by women. Oh, she thinks there. There's a couple of pounds of wheat there. That's going to make her a nice little loaf. And how long would it take to grind it? At that speed, about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those jobs that actually isn't too bad when you start, but I've been doing a few minutes. It really pulls in your back. And that hurts quite a bit there. I'm sort of a funny angle, really. Matt, could you give me a hand? Could you just hold that for a while? Yeah, wow. sure, Excellent. isn't it? Yeah, okay. The call in there. Hey, where are you going? About half an hour, Matt. Wait, 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 look at that. In Phil's trench, we're coming across lots of bricks. And there's also a lot of metal work that Phil doesn't recognise. All right, we've got another of these pieces. What well, are that's they? good, Phil. That's, um... That's some reinforcing, I think, from the water wheel, where one of the, uh, one of the arms, one of the spokes, joined the rim of the wheel, and uh, it was all bolted together. Yeah, I mean, look, we've actually got the wood preserved, sort of just stuck against the, the iron there, and, and right the way through here. This is yeah. all just wood as well. We're getting so many of these, but the other thing we're getting are these things here. What are they? Well, again, that looks like a reinforcing plate. You see, it's got a curve to it. Yeah, we've been looking which, at that. Which I should think is the outside diameter of the water wheel and is holding together the wooden rims that come round to make the, a ring, a continuous ring, and this is where they're joined together. They're bolted together with these iron plates. So we have actually got the water wheel? We've got, we've got some very good bits of the water wheel, perhaps more than you would expect to survive. We've got a lot of the, the ironwork that held it together and we could get the size of some of the components from these as well. The pieces in Phil's trench give us an indication of the size of the wheel. They fit together like this. It's a big wheel, about three metres across, probably dating from the Victorian period. Earlier on today, Helen put in a little trench over here to see if she could find the leet, which is the stream that they use for driving the water wheel. How'd you get on? Oh, well, we've done brilliantly. We've, 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 got, we've got almost all of it. Let me show you. What was it like digging this stuff? Not bad. It's, it's generally soft with a few hard lumps, but the particularly easy bit was when Ian was digging it with the mechanical digger, <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> this is the clearest bit. This is... Um, the lenses of, of, of little layers, puff pastry layers of grey and yellow, which have come from where the water was. This is the actual leet here. And then along here, again, incredibly obvious, these red stones are kind of stone lining um, to, to, to the leet itself. So we've got the whole of this side. The only thing we haven't got is the other side. We, it should be exactly the same on the other side, but it's underneath that great hill. So do we know what date this wall is? Well, well, if it's a stone wall, Mick, I think that means it's going to be before the 18th century, late medieval, 16th, 17th really? century. Really? As early as that? Yeah, well, the, the reason is, if it was 18th or 19th century, it would be a nicely dressed stone wall, or it more likely would be a brick wall, and it's not. And you think it's late medieval? Late medieval, yeah. Helen, this is you. Late medieval. <laughs> it's brilliant, isn't it? It's exactly what we wanted. End of day one, and we're halfway to doomsday. The leet looked like this. It was quite shallow and wide, about two metres across. It had two edges made of stone. These edges place it in the medieval period. We've got the leet. The work of this trench is now done. So we can now say it goes across here to Phil's trench, where it should join the wheel pit, if we have that. Phil! You got anything in your trench? Of course I have. Got the wheel pit. This is the wheel pit. 
a lot of that's actually filled in, but we have got to the bottom of the wheel pit. And look, look at this. This brick wall is actually made out of recent bricks. They're frogged. Look, there's the imprint of the frogs. Yeah. But what we have got is the pivot point for the wheel. So the actual wheel would have pivoted on that point there. I mean, that is really good because it'll give us a, an opportunity to reconstruct just how big this thing was. So this, on... this whole thing here, that is all the wheel pit? That is the wheel pit. That's a hell of a size wheel, isn't it? Well, that's right. But you see, what we want to do is if we can get over there, yeah. that wall is a totally different build to this. I reckon that wall's a lot earlier. What we've got to do is get over there and have a look at it. Go on, then. <laughs> just in front of you there, Henry, there's a yeah. parch mark there. With the grass now shorter, Stuart's got a better view of the parch marks. He and Henry plot them out. And it's beginning to make interesting viewing. A rather good day, I think. We've yeah. got the mill over there, we've got yeah. the leet over there. Yeah, and we've got some intriguing parch marks over here. Are those parch marks working out all right for you? Well, they are because they seem to match up with uh, an 1842 tithe map that we've got that shows buildings on this slope over here. So they're sitting above the, the leet here. So, yeah, I think we've got buildings on there. And the geophysics gives us a really good plan of those buildings. Why are we getting excited about another building? We've already got the mill over there. Well, we've got a building shown here on the map that makes use of the slope of the ground, the natural slope of the ground and comes down to the mill stream. So are we looking at another mill? Oh. Another mill? Well, in my experience, it's quite usual to have the crossing point on the downstream side of the mill, uh, which would fit the bill very nicely in this case. So we came for one mill. Maybe we've got two. Who knows? Maybe we'll even get three. <laughs> well, that'd be good, wouldn't it? <laughs> but we won't know till tomorrow. No. Beginning of day two here at Dotton in East Devon. We had a good day yesterday, It didn't was we? good, wasn't it? We got a long way with this. We found the most recent phase of the mill over there, and Phil and Naomi are going to continue yep. digging that. But yesterday evening, you started to develop this theory that there might be another mill up here on this slope somewhere. Yep. What's the evidence for that? Well, there is a building shown on the tithe map anyway in 1842. Yeah. But you see there are lots of parch marks in the grass. Yeah. Where the grass has died over the top of probably walls underneath. And so we did some geophysics across here and clearly there is something going on. All right, there might be buildings there, but it doesn't mean it's a mill. Well, it's an odd place to put a house or, or farm buildings. You imagine it'd be just stepped all the way up this slope. It'd be very inconvenient. So why would it be a good place to put a mill? Well, let me show you on a diagram. Look, we've got the leet at the bottom of the slope. We've then got the rise up of the ground. And if you <clears throat> build a mill across that slope like that, there are certain advantages. You can have the, the mill wheel in the pit like that and driving the mill machinery, but you can actually bring the corn in at the top level, straight into the top of the building. But it is still only a theory. Yeah, it's, it's, it needs testing. How do we test it? I think what we do is we dig a trench from where the leet is at the bottom of this slope up into the crop marks where the geophysics depict stuff. If we find a wheel pit, down there, we'll know we're right and there was a mill. But if it goes straight into buildings, we'll know that it was a, a bad idea and there wasn't a mill here. So it, it should be quite easy to test. This new trench is just here, across the leet and on the edge of a building that shows up both in the parch marks and on a 19th century map. If we find a wheel pit, we've got another mill. If so, the chances are it will be earlier than the one in Phil's trench. On the main side, we've got two trenches going. In the domestic area, we've got several internal walls. At one end, we're going deeper down the outside of the building. At the other end of the building, Phil's also getting a lot deeper. This photograph of the mill is helping us make sense of the archaeology. We are standing about here, but at a higher level. Right. And you see, if you look across here, here's the axle of the main wheel, and you can yeah. see that that is at ground level, which would actually slot into that sort of indentation yeah. in the brickwork. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you carry that across, then that goes into that wall there, right. which is going to be our wall across there. That's behind the planks on the left-hand side there. That's right. If you compare the level which this wheel uh, axle goes across 
and the level of the windows, which are right up here. So these are right up across here, then, That's the windows, right. aren't they? So in other words, that does suggest that your floor level is going to have to be down here, which suggests that underneath here, just as was, was picked up on the geophysics, there is actually an underground room, if you like, right. where, the, where the mill equipment would have been, yeah. which is going to be underneath there. Yeah, yeah. So does that sound feasible to you, Mike? Yeah, I, I, think, I, think that's the, I think that's very good, Mick, but what I think we need to do first is we need to get into the wheel pit and pull it back further towards the road. Why do we need to do that? Well, I think what we should be looking for in the wheel pit is a, a little rise, a little kick up at the back of the bottom of the wheel pit. What, what, what do you mean? Well, um, we're looking for a, a mini dam, perhaps a, a foot, two feet high, which would increase the headwater and oh. efficiency of the water wheel. So that as the water comes in, it's a little bit higher than the bottom right. of the yeah. wheel, in fact. Now, if we can find that, that will give us not only what kind of wheel we've got in detail, but also I think it'll help us a bit about the date. So what, what date would that sort of structure indicate? Well it, well, it oughtn't to be any earlier than the 16th century. Right. Just a couple of miles away is Otterton Mill. It's still a working mill, grinding corn once a week. It's interesting. It shows me just how much this process changed people's lives. Martin said he reckoned it would take us about half an hour to grind this little lot up by hand. In fact, Matt did it and it took him two hours. Oh How long do you reckon it would have taken at a water mill? A couple of minutes with a, in a mill like this. How does it work, Martin? Well, the, the water wheel's mounted on a central shaft or axle which goes through the wall into the mill and that takes the power right through into the part where you need it to drive the millstone. Here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can see the shaft coming through there. Yes, that's right, Tony, and the main gear turning in a pit at the bottom, and that's the feature that we're looking for in the mill at Dalton. So the gear going that way then transfers into this one and the power goes up there? That's right, and this is driving the millstones, which are on the floor above. So the power comes up through to here? Yes, it does. It's turning the top millstone, that's turned from below, and then you can see the hopper over the millstones where the grain is being fed by gravity down into a hole through the top millstone. And what happens to the corn once it's ground? Well, it comes out inside the case and then there's only one place for it to go and that's down the spout to the floor below. So we have to go back down again? We do indeed, yeah. You keep fitting the mill. Oh, and here's the finished product coming down the chute. Yeah. How long do you think it would take to fill up that sack? Apparently it takes about a quarter of an hour. It's beautiful, isn't it? Back on site, our search for what might be an earlier mill isn't going well. Helen and Bridge have found very little, really. There are some pieces of pot, but it all looks like a rubbish dump to them. Even that, though, isn't simple. It'd be nice to know if we're looking at an area where there is possibly earlier material floating about, yeah, rather it... than this being the early hmm. features. Yeah, I'd like to know if this is a primary rubbish dump or somebody's just clearing an another rub rubbish dump into a, in a secondary way, into something else. If there is an earlier mill in this field, it has to be against the edge of the leet. So we geofizz along the leet to see if we can pick up any structures, just to check it out. In his trench, Phil's got another wall. Is that it? I think it might be Phil. Oh, look. Good. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Stone approach. That's following the, the shape of the water wheel. Oh. We've done it. Yeah, there's a wall. There's a great wall there. It's a fresh shot. That's the where, the where it comes in at a higher level. It comes in at a higher level. I, I, either, either at the top or sort of halfway down the wheel. Well, you was vindicated. Strip that back a little bit, you said. I want to see I that. I did. You I said did. it was critical. I did, and it, and it is. This wall's the same height as the wall to the side, which means that Mike's original thought was wrong. This isn't an undershot wheel like this. It's a breast shot one, like this. A much more efficient system. Off to one side of the wheel pit, we've come across a large piece of stone. Phil and I have a look at it. Well, where should the middle be? <laughs> well, in there somewhere. <laughs> We're practically up to the cameraman's waist in debris. It is curving. It's definitely curving all the way around, isn't it? But there's no hole in the middle. Ah. 
And what's that? Is that something in the middle? A hole. A hole in the middle. What is round in a mill with a hole in the middle? <laughs> a polo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean this whole thing is the hole? So it's been blocked up? Oh, wow. Mm. I mean, that's hollow. It's a puzzle, isn't it, Mike? It's a, I, I wonder if we should be taking the machine to clear the top off here so, so we can get a really good look, Phil. I think you're actually probably right. <laughs> right, to be continued. <laughs> In the domestic part of the building, we've been looking for household items that might give us some dates. And sure enough, we've got a collection of them. So this is the stuff from this trench here. Right. And really, we want your opinion on the dates, John, if you can. This, for instance, Staffordshire pottery of the early 19th century. Oh, or this, these white earthenware. Right. There's another example there. So that's all going with the life of the mill in the 19th yeah, century, and, basically. and these, this is uh, very probably from Bridgewater, these red earthenware tiles, you know, from your Somerset yeah, yeah. days. Yeah, yeah. So we've got a little pile of things developing here. These run right through the 18th century, could well be earlier than that. But as we get down this end of the tray, there are earlier things. This is a uh, trailed slipware of the first half of the 18th century. And this last piece I ended up with it. Now, that is a cut edge, isn't it? That's it's a bit of modern glass, glass, though, isn't it? It's not. It, it, that actually is window, early window glass. And this um, is, is from a diamond pane, 17th, probably beginning of the 18th century. But it's actually early, isn't it? Oh, nice. What about that yeah. piece? That piece came from much lower down in that Yeah, that, that's, there. that's good, because this, this is earlier. Lead glazed earthenwares of the late 16th and early 17th century. And the typical thing about them is that they look dull. Right. At this sort of period, <laughs> most of the pottery is uh, yeah. unornamented. But it's back as far as 1600, mm, so 1600. at least there's indications that we might have stuff on the site back as far as that. That's right, yeah, that's good. Great. The finds are also taking us back to the 1600s, just like the date of the Leet. But the earliest mention of a mill at Dotton was in here, in the Doomsday Book. It's an invaluable record of England in 1086. It lists all the land and livestock and was drawn up to enable William the Conqueror to collect his dues in the form of taxes. What does it say, though, about Dotton? It tells us that uh, the area paid tax for one vergate of land and three furlongs. I'm not even going to ask you what a vergate is. Let's move on. It's just very, a very small area. OK. A very small area. Um, and there was uh, land for two ploughs with one and a half ploughs there. How can you have half a plough? They quite possibly were using half a plough of somebody else's, so um, borrowing a plough oh, yeah, and therefore yeah. it added up to half a plough. And a slave. And a slave. Yeah. But also the, there was the mill which paid five shillings. Tax. Um, that's right. And the whole area was actually valued at seven shillings. You've got Dotton Mill here, which is worth five bob, and then you've got all this land round here, and that's only worth another two bob. Yes, so the mill is actually the most valuable bit of this land unit. Phil now has his millstone. And it's a beauty. But can Martin date it? It looks to me as though there might be four, three or four grooves coming off of the what, what? central In hole here? there. Down here. What, one wonder, there. Can we clean it up a bit and just have a look? Or am I making this up? I it's think we have. Well, that, would, that would be I good. Think, I think we have. What's a slot? What's that slot there? Yeah, I think we have. I think this is. I think there's another one there. Oh, there! Oh, there. Yes. So you've got four horns that, that's right. coming off it, which have been filled in. Oh, that's that right. would be brilliant. Yes, there they so are. So it is a top stone, and the curving shape of those... Oh, that's excellent, Phil. The curving shape of those certainly uh, pushes the date of this back. I mean, this is uh, 17th, 18th century millstone, I would say. Oh, that, oh. that fits in with some of the pottery we've been looking at, surely. Oh, lad, look at that. Isn't that a strange shape? The key is this bit in the middle. The shape of this dates the stone as 17th century. The dates are all beginning to tie together. We now have the floor of the domestic part of the mill building. It too is a beauty. This was probably the kitchen floor. We decide to lift a section of it to see if we can see signs of any earlier flooring. Across the road in the other field, Helen and Bridge are drawing a blank. 
they've found the continuation of the leet. This wall is one edge of it. But there's no sign of a wheel pit, and the building doesn't seem to be attached to the leet. It's not looking like an earlier mill, and dating is a problem. It's yes. either before, during or after, but we don't know which yet. <laughs> Yesterday, you had the devil's own job getting anywhere near this wall, didn't you? But now you've cleaned it up and it's looking great. I'm really glad I did too. I mean, when I got here, I mean, the first thing I noticed was that these bricks here are actually frogged and I was a bit despondent about it because they're exactly the same date and age as that wall on the other side. But then as I went down, I realised that it actually zigzags its way down in a sort of V-shaped and it kind of wiggles its way up round through here and then levels off across there. And I realised it was just one big botched repair job and that underneath all this is good stone masonry. And that stone built work, I think, is the earliest stuff. And in fact, it goes behind and therefore it's got to be earlier than that brick work there. What do you reckon, Martin? Yeah, I think that's absolutely right, Phil. I think this is where the water and the action of the water wheel has eroded the wall, the stone of the wall, and it's been patched with brickwork. So what do you think about that older bit? What kind of date? Well, from the other evidence we've had, I, I guess 17th, 18th century. Well, that's great. That takes the story of the mill back about 350 years, doesn't it? Well, it does, but I think we've got the possibility of taking it back even more than that. How? Well, if we can have a look underneath the floor of this wheel pit, there may be some evidence under there of earlier structures, because this leet and this watercourse has been in use for a long time. You see, down here, I've already had a bit of a poke round. This hole here has actually been made by the wheel. And look, you can actually see, look. Oh, wow. Oh, it's a big piece of wood. That is interesting, isn't it? Hmm. Didn't expect that. Well, that gives them something to chase tomorrow, doesn't it? It does indeed. It's day three in our search for an early mill in Dotton, in Devon. At the end of yesterday, Phil found an intriguing piece of wood. Oh, wow. That is interesting, isn't it? Hmm. Didn't expect that. But what is this? This is a piece of the water wheel. It's the rim. How do you know that? Well, look, you've got a really nice curve there and we've got a lump of wood here, which, which I think is part of the base of a paddle. And what are these lumpy bits? Well, we, we, we've, we've got bits of pins for holding the paddles in place. But do you know that the water wheel would have looked like that? I do, because we've got this really nice late 19th century photograph. That's cheating. <laughs> which shows us the rim of the water wheel. So this actually century. is part of that? That wheel is a fragment there. Late 19th century? Late 19th century, judging by the guy with the flat cap. Late 19th century doesn't sound much, really, but actually it's, it's 150 years ago version, isn't it? In his trench, Phil started digging. But there's a problem. There's more wood, but there also seems to be concrete. Oh, what the hell? This is confusion, Mike. Cos there's... There's actually a piece of timber. This timber is coming right in underneath there. Underneath the concrete? Underneath the concrete. And yet, it's, it's occupying this trough in the concrete, and it looks for all the world as though I've got concrete. I'm not sure whether I haven't got concrete right the way down there. Could it like be stone at the bottom, Phil, rather than concrete? An earlier lining of the, of the wheel pit? Well, it might be. Because if you've got wood underneath the concrete, that might mean we've got an earlier structure to the wheel pit. Yeah, but, but, but then you see, if this concrete is laid directly on it, it might actually be stuck onto it. Well, I reckon that concrete's going to have to come up uh -huh. one way or the other. At the other end of the mill building, we've already gone through the floor of the domestic area, but there's nothing datable and no other features. This trench did give us some internal walls. We begin to plot them out to see if we can understand how this building worked on the inside. 
The last mill on this site was knocked down only 30 years ago. So there are quite a few people still around who remember it. They saw it at work. I can remember it, you know, the old mill with the flour. All the farmers, the tenant farmers, brought their corn there. Reg can remember the mill working. Yeah, when I worked on the farm up there, the farmer used to have to ground the mill during the war for the farmers. I remember coming over to the mill with my grandfather in his pony and trap and bringing corn and fetching flour and stuff like that. What was the miller like? Well, he, he was a little short chap and he was always covered in white flour. He really was a dusty miller? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was. You've done your family research, right? That's right. And this lady's family worked in the mill in the 1840s. My great, great, great fam grandfather, he was miller here for 50 years. His name was Joel Roger Carter. This is his daughter, his middle daughter, Anna, and she's my great-great-grandmother. She was born at Dotton Mill. Joel Carter, the miller, he was quite a musician. He played cornet, but he used to go up on the hills above the mill to play, and they could hear the music all across the valley. For a couple of days, Stuart's been looking at likely places for other mills across the whole site. It's becoming increasingly clear that there's only really one place the mill could have been. What you need to be able to do is manage the flow of water very, very carefully. And what they've done here at Dotton is to manage the river in a very specific way by building a weir across the river here, mm -hmm. which then allows the water to flow down a leet in a ditch. They dig a ditch down here, the water flows down it, turns the mill wheel, and then the water just flows back into the river down here. And one thing to, to point out is the road, which I think has got forgotten in all the, the search that we've got. When you say the road, that's our little country lane. That's it, it's absolutely critical right to the sighting. Yeah. It's the only crossing of this valley in the parish. What you need with a mill is not only the water to turn the wheel, but you also need to deliver the corn to, to grind and you need to take the flour away. So the conditions are absolutely perfect for the mill just at that point. So does that mean that where Dotton Mill is now is the prime site for a mill and no one would have built one anywhere else? I, that, I think that's exactly the case. I firmly believe that under the mill that Phil's digging will be evidence of the earliest mill on the site. It's in exactly the position it ought to be to be efficient. In the field across the lane, Helen's search for an earlier mill has come to an end. She was looking for signs of a wheel pit, but there isn't one. She's now found most of the leet running from Phil's trench across the field she's been working in. But there's no sign of any building that might be a mill, and no sign of any structure other than what was probably a house. We've opened two holes in it, yeah. looking for an earlier mill on this site. And I think what we have shown is that there's no, we haven't found a mill and there's no need for a mill in this field. Everything connected with the leet is going over to that one. Well, that's yeah. really important, isn't yep. it? Because yep. up until now, we've had circumstantial evidence that there's only been one site for a mill here because that's the best site that there could possibly be. Yep. Now, the archaeology is confirming it. Absolutely. It certainly is here. Yes, this is all leet connected with that mill. In fact, the leet turns out to be the key to dating the site of the earliest mill. Analysing the various maps, we realise that the key map is that of the parish. This is the parish boundary. On this side, the parish boundary is the leet. As the leet's man-made and doesn't follow any natural feature, this means that the leet must have been here when the parish boundary was laid out and that pushes it and the mill right into the 10th or 11th century, before Doomsday. Back at the main site, just off to the side of where Phil's digging, we've found a second millstone. But the quality of this stone is very poor. It's such rubbish stone, isn't it? Well, it is. When you think we're in a county with dark wall granite, with ports that you can bring stone in from the French basin, Forest of Dean's not far away. What are they doing using rubbish like that? It's uh, a new red sandstone sort of conglomerate type. Yeah. 
and it's very unusual. In fact, it's the first one I've ever seen in Devon. But they would have had grit in their grain, wouldn't they, if they'd have used that? Well, they would, but I, I suspect it was used, at least latterly, for grinding animal feed with. Ah, right. So it wouldn't right. have mattered quite yeah. so much, or maybe coarse grinding yeah. of some yeah. sort. But I think the other thing is, it tells us a bit more of the story that this wasn't a particularly prosperous mill latterly that they weren't buying good quality millstones in. So that's in great contrast to the, the five shilling at Doomsday, which was a, was a lot of money. Well, it is indeed, isn't yeah. it? Yes, yeah. it shows how, over a period of a 1,000 years, the life of a mill can change yeah. enormously. Yeah. Yes. Phil's trying to analyse what's going on with the layers he's finding in his trench. He's not quite there yet. I was beginning to think that we maybe had sequences of gravel with bits of wood stratified within them because this timber here overlies this gravel, yeah. but this gravel here overlies this big piece of timber in there. Yeah. And I began to wonder whether or not we might just have a sort of sequence of, of layers and deposits with yeah. timber and then the timber rots away and more gravel comes in and they replace it and the whole thing gradually builds up. Yeah. But I think all we can say at the moment is that certainly in this gravel there are archaeological deposits. Mm -hmm. At the moment they're only looks like they're only sort of Victorian, 18th, 19th century. But I think mainly there is the potential for earlier stuff further on down. I think we just gotta go for it and see whether we can find stuff. Yeah, I agree. We have the wheel pit, but we also have this other pit called the pit wheel. This held the gearing to turn the millstones. We do have rather a deep hole where the pit should be. Stone of crows. If this is the pit wheel, then it is gonna be is a gonna deep. Be slot almost as well it has to be almost as deep as the water wheel that is a hell of a hole down there isn't it God, huh? hey <laughs> <laughs> and there's also this big metal lump here something it do done it do you want to see if we can get this out i think we should go for it yeah Well, it looks like the pit wheel, or part of the pit wheel. Well, what, what's this bit? This is the rim of the gear, right. where, the, where the wooden cogs were mortised in. This would be the working face, have it upright. So ver vertical, Martin? Yes, that was going to be yes, my vertical next gear, and these mortises are for the wooden cogs that uh, it were in the face of the gear to mesh with the, the rest of the gearing in the mill. So why are you using wooden cogs? Well, this was a fairly large diameter gear, and in the early days, they couldn't cast to good tolerances, and two cast iron gears running together would have been very noisy and put a lot of stress on each other. So the larger gears were often made with mortises cast in them to put wooden cogs in, which were all paired and prepared by hand, and it made for much quieter and safer running. The cog in the center is the piece of gear we've now found. This linked the water wheel to the millstones. It was a key part of the mill equipment. We've now plotted the internal walls of the building and have a good idea of how the inside of the last mill building on the site worked. It's a lovely looking mill you got. It's terrific, isn't it? We've got this wonderful exterior water wheel and all the power that's going out going on there is coming into the uh, this end of the mill where well, we've got all the mill machinery with with up there on the first floor the millstones grinding away and then over there at that end we've got the domestic building can I have a look inside why don't we go on then so that Big wall over there, Tony. That's yeah. our gable end wall, behind which we've got our water wheel. And then this half wheel you can see in front of it, that's our pit wheel. That's bringing all the power in to, to this machinery here, up into the big wallower wheel in the ceiling. And above us, we've got the grinding stones. Yeah. The millstones working away, that's the noise we can hear. And then uh, small window storage beneath <laughs> it, and 
big window, lots of panes, and the miller's desk beneath that. It's where he keeps all the records, you know, make sure everybody pays the right tithe, the right time of year. And it's actually sitting on a millstone in the floor. Ooh, nice warm in here. Yeah, it's a lot better, isn't it, Tony? Yeah. Um, that's because this is the heart of the house. So we've got, um, over there, we've got, the, we've got the table, dining table with the, yeah. with the bench in front of it. And, We've got the, the big dresser there with, the, with all the sort of pewter and earthenware cups and bowls and stuff. But the real heart of the room and, and the house is the range over there. Yeah. Yeah, big copper kettle, water boiling all the time. And then, and then above it, we've got pots and pans and all sorts of stuff. And this is the heart of the house. It's really cosy, isn't it? It is, isn't it? The last building on this site seems to have been put up in the 18th century. Our earlier walls and the millstones date from the late 17th century. But the finds take us further back to the early 1600s. The wheel pit has early bricks, and even earlier stone at the base. And right at the end of day three, Phil's come up with the goods once again. You know this piece of timber that starts there? Yeah. Well, I managed to trace it along, and actually, I've got it. Still going. Right through to there. In other words, it's going underneath the wall. So that piece of timber has either got to be earlier than that wall yep. or at the very least the same date. As a foundation timber. Exactly. Yes. The timber in this trench suggests a much earlier phase for the wheel pit than we'd thought. Everything says 17th century, but I also think that we've probably got stuff earlier because the bottom of that, that leet is incredibly well worn, it's incredibly full of gravel, and right down there, I mean, we've, we've, we've got timber in that goes underneath the, the, the floor. I think we're, we're looking at a medieval material, mm. questionably. But I, th I think you see that the t topographical situation of the place argues that it's earlier even than the structural stuff, because this mill leet that runs right the way through is the parish boundary. That's likely been fixed in the 10th or 11th century. Uh, Dotton's on this side of that. There's a very limited area, perhaps about 50 metres on the side of it, you could put a mill. We've tested it with three or four trenches. This is the most likely place for that. So, you know, mm. it's not just that it's 400 years old, 500 years old, it's likely to have been here for a thousand years. When this building was demolished in the 1960s, it wasn't just the end for a building that was a couple of hundred years old. It was the end of almost a thousand years of milling on this very spot. To ensure you catch all the latest updates, please do subscribe to this channel, follow us on social media, and sign up to our newsletter, and join us on Patreon.